What's up, my friend? Consider this your official invitation to our upcoming four-day mystical immersion conference. It's going to be amazing. We're going to spend four days encountering the presence of God, going deep into the heart of Jesus to choose our mystical identity. We're going to be exploring the power of your choice. We're going to be tapping into the mystical side of our faith, which is pretty, pretty much all of it, <laughs> all while diving deep into our true identity, who we really are in Him. I'm so excited about this retreat because I've teamed up with some good friends of mine that's going to make this thing even better. Myself, Gil Hodges from Kingdom Talks, Martin Smith with Identity Coaching. Come on, guys. And we'll also be joined by my good friend, Lahaba. It's always something amazing when I team up with these guys. This four day encounter starts February the 15th through the 18th. It's gonna be in Anderson, South Carolina. As of December the 4th, we have released the early bird special, so make sure you get your tickets ASAP because the prices will increase. I can't wait to see you in 2024 at the Choosing Your Mystical Identity four day encounter. It's gonna be amazing. Go to seer.school to get your tickets now. Really quick, before we get started, if you are blessed by this ministry, if you're blessed by this platform, anything that I bring to the table, I ask you to partner with me via Patreon. Go to patreon.com backslash truthseeker and you unlock rewards. My entire discography of music, webinars, meditations, weekly hangouts, and so much more. Patreon.com backslash truthseeker. Go check it out. Won't you come, come and take Podcast streaming live at truthseeker.com, your source for spiritual and inspirational music, teachings, and media. The show is designed to help you grow in your walk with Christ and advance the kingdom of heaven. And now, your host, Truth Seeker. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Truth Seeker Podcast. I'm excited to be with you for another episode. Today, my guest is Lisa Richards. Lisa, welcome to the podcast, my friend. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much. This is such an honor. Great to have you. Um, we're going to be talking about energy and how to amplify it, um, different types of energy, I'm assuming, um, pyramid energy, orgone energy, organite, the pyramids, and, and maybe bringing the two together. A lot, of, a lot of theories. I think a lot of people have seen these, these little pyramids in, in passing and not really know what they do and probably me being one of them uh, yeah, i have some here and when i got them I had no idea you know what they were just some cool little random crystals mixed together and a little coil running through it so we're going to dive deep into that today with you and your work and what you bring to the table so it's going to be fun exciting everybody buckle up and uh, let us know in the comments if you have any questions and we will um, try to answer those the best we can and i'm sure Lisa will come back and do that as well. So to start off this conversation, and we're going to dive deep into all that energy. We're going to get fun. We're going to get woo-woo. We're going to be practical as well. But let's start off and um, just kind of give an overview who you are, what you do, what you bring to the table. Yes, thank you. So my name is Lisa Richards. Um, I am the business owner of Pyramid Surge, and it, I'm actually partnered with Stargate Pyramids and Charlie Z. So Stargate Pyramids um, makes the meditation pyramids. I make the accessories. So like the capstones and the pyramid amplifiers and, you know, different EMF protection jewelry and things like that. Uh, pendulums, as you can see behind me. 
Um, Charlie and I also a few years ago started the Pyramid Science Foundation, um, <clears throat> which is based on the research of pyramid energy. And, you know, people see these pyramids all over the world and we wonder what they're about we don't really know and they're definitely not tombs for the pharaohs no pharaohs were ever found inside of these pyramids um, so there's a lot of different um, perspectives from a lot of different researchers around the world um, but the russian government specifically has been building pyramids all over russia for the past 20 or 30 years and they're made out of, <clears throat> excuse me, non-conductive materials, specifically PVC pipe and fiberglass. And they are a different geometry. They're like the geometry on the shelf above me here. Um, so it's a steeper angle than like the Giza pyramids that you're gonna see. The geometry has to be very specific though. This one is an angle of 76.345 degrees. And you have to have that specific angle in order for it to work properly. It also has to be aligned to the north, true north, not magnetic north. There's a 10, usually a 10 degree difference depending on where you live in the world between true north and magnetic north. And all the pyramids around the world are aligned to north as well. Um, but so let's get back to the government. So the government specifically um, hired An Alexander Golod to do all this research with pyramids in Russia. And they built one, I was 144 meters tall. Um, they were finding amazing results with this pyramid. Um, the ozone was healing above the pyramid. Um, people would go in and get spontaneously healed. Um, just all kinds of things. It was decreasing the violent weather over there. Even outside of the pyramid where the points are, they saw plants growing that they didn't recognize. So they analyzed those plants and they went extinct thousands of years ago. So Charlie and I, through the Pyramid Science Foundation are trying to raise funds to replicate a lot of this research because of course they don't give all the information to you, just a little bit, little tidbits here and there. Um, but it does amazing things with gardening, um, you know, increases the yield by 30 to 100%. Uh, you can supercharge your seeds inside of it before you plant. Um, when you meditate inside of it, it brings your body into coherence, you know, back to your body's true ability um, to heal itself is really what it's doing. And then, you know, if you utilize it for uh, manifestation, you have to be very mindful of your thoughts before you sit inside of a, one of these pyramids, because it's like jumping ahead of the line to place your order. So if you're in a bad mood, it's an amplifier as well. It's going to amplify that bad mood as well. Um, so just be very mindful of your thoughts. But if you're very certain on what you want to manifest and sit inside it, like I said, it's like jumping ahead of the line to place your order, you know, meditations, you're going to have deeper meditations. Um, if you're an energy healer, if you do your work inside of the pyramid, you're going to connect to your client a lot faster. Um, so there's so just so many benefits. Um, you know, one of the studies that the Russians did that just amazes me, I have to tell this to everybody. They had a, a study with 12 babies that were so premature. Every one of these babies was expected to die. And they had water that was sitting inside of the pyramid charging for a couple of weeks they injected that water into the IVs of these babies and every one of them lived. So this is the kind of amazing work that's being hidden from us. And what we can see now, you know, a couple of years ago, Russia was being demonized and now we can kind of see how they're actually caring for their people more. You know, they're more on top of the health spectrum. They're more into natural healing. They kicked out all the GMOs in their country and will arrest anybody for growing things like that. So we have to look outside of what we're being told and we can see the world around us is being unraveled. All the lies are coming to the forefront and nobody knows who to trust anymore. And we just, we're the only person that we can really trust. So we need to start tapping into our true power. Our intuition is the most powerful thing that we have, you know, it's our superpower. And once we learn to utilize that, you know, through tools like the pyramids, 
um, we're just going to be unstoppable because look at all the things they're doing around us in our environment to keep us down. They're not just poisoning our food. They're poisoning our water. They're poisoning the electrical magnetic frequencies around us are harming us. Um, the medications they give us are poisoning us. So, and we're still drudging on, you know, it's not like they put out the rat poison and kill us. We're getting poisoned from every avenue and we're still drudging on. So that should show you how powerful we really are. And I know, that the pyramids get demonized somewhat because, oh my goodness, they're on the back of the dollar bill and they're associated with the Illuminati and this and that. But these are tools. It's an energy tool that can be used for good and bad and it's powered by your intention. And I believe there are more good people in the world than there are bad. So once we start tapping into our power and utilizing our intention, the world's going to be a beautiful place. Wow. Man, I I have so many questions and so much to add, you know. Um, So this is so this is a pyramid is almost this focal point of channeling some kind of energy right Mm -hmm. um can you talk a little bit about being specific with the energy if it's universal energy we've heard of um orgone energy that it's channeling it's creative energy it's is it channeling spirit Mm -hmm. spirits i mean what is spirit or spirits outside of energy can you talk a a little bit about like like what it's it's doing like with from the point to whatever's below it or in it yeah so it's mainly it's connecting to your higher self so we all have that aspect of ourself that knows our full potential that knows our full ability that you know resides in another realm let's say so Once we connect, let's say we're utilizing the pyramid for healing. Once we connect to our higher self, our higher self is like, hey, we know how to heal. Listen up, let's do it. And instantly you're going to start healing your body again. You're communicating with yourself again with that aspect of yourself that remains in a better place. That's not tainted by this 3D reality. Um, But like I said, if you're an energy healer, if you're a channeler, you can tune in. It's just an, it's an antenna. It's an antenna and an amplifier of energy. So you can connect with whatever whatever you want it to connect with. But like I said before too, it's all based on your intention. So if your intentions are bad, you can connect with something bad if you'd like to as well, you know, which I don't recommend of course, but you know, people do that. But like I said, there's going to be, um, it's, it's just that there's going to be way more people out there using it for good. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be, you know, that's the war that we're sadly in right now. It's, it's good against bad. It's evil. <laughs> There's evil out there and we need to conquer it. And this is one of the tools that we can utilize to definitely do that because it kind of, when you're sitting inside of it, you feel like you're in a different realm. You know, you're going to meditate, um, get into the meditative zone a lot faster. You're going to get more information when you're meditating and comparing this geometry to like the Giza pyramid, Um, I say the Giza pyramid, which I don't have it here. It's over there, but, um, you know, everybody has seen the Giza geometry. It's a shorter, wider at the base. That's more of like the dial up connection. This is for these pyramids, the steeper angle, um, the more power it's going to have. So it's more like the high speed internet, you know, it's going to be a faster connection. The Giza pyramids are good. They're good for like, um, you know, people that have the monkey brain who can't calm their mind. So um, people that have trouble sleeping, you know, that's what the Giza pyramids for Giza pyramid. If you're drawn to it, which was the first one I was drawn to before I found the Russian pyramid as well. Um, It's drawn, you're drawn to it for a reason. So utilize that until you're advanced enough to move up to the Russian geometry. But it's also, there's a lot to it. You know, I'm more on the spiritual aspect of it. Um, My my um, partner, Charlie Zies, who's with Stargate Pyramids, my business partner, he goes more into the science behind it. And that's why we created the Pyramid Science Foundation. You know, he's the one who mainly it's the structure of all reality is what he discovered in his research. You know, it's a creates a torsion field, but there's still a a vast mystery to it that we're still trying to figure out. Hmm. So what all goes in inside of it? Because there's there's different kinds, right? So, you know, thinking about the ones that you get in or put mm-hmm. above you, um, you know, and, and then there's crystals in it to, to amplify. You see things like that, uh, a coil that's, that's going around and 
pointing up and like getting the energy and bringing it down below. But there's also, like you said, the PVC pipe that people are sitting in. Um, I've seen people wear them on their heads, like have like pyramids on top of their heads. Um, yeah. Shout out to the, um, you know, my breatharian friends online who, who are doing, I got some friends that are uh, pushing, pushing that energy and, and they're wearing it everywhere like a hat. You yeah. know, you see Crowley wearing a pyramid kind of thing on his head. You know, maybe he understood some of this channeling the, you know, the frequencies that that he wanted to be um, um, strategic about, you know, about what he wanted to come in versus what's just out there for the masses. There, there's a lot of awesome places we can journey with this, but cr like creating one, what's what's the difference of the two and 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 are you and and are you talking about both yeah so the meditation pyramids that charlie makes are actually made out of pvc pipe specifically from the research of the russian government um, they found that if you make a pyramid out of metal the russian geometry pyramid is the only one they tested but if you make the russian geometry pyramid out of metal it diminishes the power not entirely, it doesn't entirely go away, but it lessens the power. So you want the most power that you can get. So they have to use a non-conductive material. Charlie uses PVC pipe, but I'm in the process of, I want to go more of an organic nature and looking into like wooden pyramids. Um, I'll be doing some research with gardening and stuff this year. So the wooden pyramids would be more ideal. Now, since they are diminished in power with metal, my capstones and my pyramid amplifiers that I make that go with this meditation pyramid do not have metal in them. They do have, um, like you can see, the crystals in them. This one has um, septarian, it has pyrite, it has fire agate, and then it has bionized uh, quartz sand in it as well. Now this, um, anytime you put a crystal inside of resin, um, even though resin is so-called is is like a chemical composition it's still carbon based so it's creating kind of like the orgone orgone energy um but not i'll go into the orgone energy in a minute what it's doing is when the resin cures it squeezes the crystals which is like a juicing effect it it squeezes out more energy of those crystals so the metaphysical properties of those crystals are going to be more powerful when they're inside of the resin than if they were by themselves um, I also do another process called bionization which I haven't seen many people do at all it's based on the work of Wilhelm Reich and uh, Wilhelm Reich was the one who founded orgone energy um, Bionization is a process of freezing and boiling a product um, several times, which infuses it with life force energy, which never dissipates. So all the crystals that I utilize in my products are bionized, and which means that you never have to charge them. They'll always retain a very high energy. You can actually put other crystals beside these or inside your meditation pyramid to charge them because there's such a high energy. Now, going to the orgone energy, that is different. A lot of people have these orgone pyramids or just orgone devices. Wilhelm Reich um, discovered orgone energy, another name for the ether. You know, uh, there's a lot of different names for it. Um, but he actually moved to America. He was doing uh, public displays of healing in America for thousands of people out in the, out in the public. People were witnessing this. Um, it, he got arrested for fraud. You know, he came here to, to live the American dream, but it turned into a nightmare for him. He got arrested for fraud. He was thrown in prison. He, all of his books were burnt. His work was stolen. And two weeks before he was released, uh, he conveniently died of a heart attack. So that there um, proves to me that, yes, his work was was good and we need to look into it. So I started delving into orgone energy. Now, orgone energy is the layering of organic and inorganic materials. So since resin is a carbon base, the metals that are in orgone uh, or organite, organite is a trademark name. So some people can't use that unless they pay a fee. Um, but um, so orgone energy is the layering of carbon, and um, the metals. So what that does, it creates like a scrubbing effect. 
So the carbon, the resin will attract the um, ether, the orgone energy, and the metals repel it back really fast. So if you have them all stacked and layered together, it's creating a pushing and pulling effect back and forth, back and forth, which is scrubbing that energy clean. And the energy that's emitted out of the top of that device is now clean energy. So let's say um, you have one of those orgone devices, put it in front of your computer, you know, before you had that pyramid there or that orgone device, you were getting blasted with radiation from your computer. Now that pyramid is there, that orgone device, and it's transmuting that negative radiation energy into beneficial energy. So now instead of getting blasted with negative energy, you're getting blasted with beneficial energy, which actually empowers you even more than if you were not by it in the first place. Wow. Um, talking about the, you know, conduit, if you will, from the energies above to the energies below, like even in that symbolism, you know, you have the, um, uh, six pointed star, which is a pyramid pointing up and the interlocking pyramid pointing down, giving us the six pointed star. Um, we've seen again in, in a lot of these pyramids, they have the spiral with a coil, which is usually copper. And, and um, I've been seeing all of these videos on TikTok of people in their gardens taking a copper rod or a stick and, and putting copper coiled around it, putting it in their garden and putting it in the ground and then going up to act as an antenna. Like you said, there's this antenna effect. Sometimes they'll have a crystal on it, but it's like to collect or to pull in this higher energy and to drive it into the soil in that area. And so it like enriches the soil and the crop that they're getting in that area that's connecting the heavens and the earth, to, the earth together, if you will, are like sometimes like 60 times more harvest in the fruits or the vegetables that they're getting. And the fruits are way bigger, like insanely bigger, like almost like bigger as in there shouldn't be any lack on the mm -hmm. earth because this crop is like 60 times bigger where these these poles are these rods are so we tried it you know as skeptics hey let's try it out and see you know anybody can you know get a piece of copper put it in the ground and put it in your garden or in your flower pot and just check it out and sure enough the uh soil that we got that we started this this garden with um, wasn't the best. It was a lot of mixed dirt and a lot of it um, was red, red dirt. So it's going to take a while. There's no compost, no yeah. you know, organic soil from, from our land. It was brought in. So um, it's not the best. Let's say that we get some stuff to grow, but uh, it's not the best at all. So we tried it in the middle and we took the, the, uh, a stick, my wife did and put a copper coil all the way around it, went up, to a bunch of little um, antennas at the top and a crystal in the middle. And sure enough, almost everything in the flower, well, the garden is, you know, we, she get, she, she's doing better. Let's say that. But where the rod is, mm -hmm. the, the rod is, every, it, it's, uh, everything is alive and everything is um, growing in abundance right in the middle where she put the rod. So, it's like, hold on, there's something to it. And it's made it through where everything else is like all in by the wayside, this plant, the vegetables here in the middle are still producing. So it's like, we gotta go, we gotta get more. We gotta go get more, you know, just study the technology. What is it, you know? But I think it is being able to harness the energies of the ether, of spirit, whatever you wanna call it. It's been called so many names and connecting it with the earth. I mean, that's what we are as well. You know, we are spirit beings that are connected with the earth. You know, we are from the earth, uh, Adam, we're from the ground or whatever that, that story, all the stories say that we're from the earth and our spirits are from above, if you will. So I see that connection and I see it there with the pyramid energy, just harnessing the free energy. It's yes. free energy. It's there. You just got to learn how to absorb it and, and use it, right? Yeah. So that's one of our big projects next. Once we raise enough funds, we're going to be testing the free energy 
properties of the Russian geometry pyramid. There's actually um, a place in Peru, um, blue, oh my goodness, I can't think of the name, but they have a giant meditation pyramid down there. I, um, I don't know how tall it is. It's probably at least 50 feet tall, but it's beautiful made out of bamboo. Um, and they were willing to help us with our research for the, the free energy. So, you know, um, going back to a story, um, now this isn't the Russian geometry pyramid, but the Giza geometry pyramid, there was a man in Canada named Les Brown in the seventies. He built a three story high, um, wooden Giza, um, pyramid greenhouse. So three different stories, you know, the very top story was the warmest. So he would grow in Canada, tropical plants on that third floor. <clears throat> and then um, one day he decided he was going to connect the peak to the very center, to a ground plate in the center. And he had a cotton or wool um, rope that was hanging down from the peak. And he had a metal plate in the ground below him. And as soon as he grabbed that piece of wool and that metal plate at the same time, he got zapped with such a blast of energy it knocked him like 30 feet across his greenhouse. And that kind of traumatized him enough where he didn't want to play around with that energy anymore, but that's how powerful the energy is, you know? Wow. Um, I've, I've been, you know, I'm a student of the scriptures of the Bible. That's my, you know, that's my go-to source. That's my, um, I think there's a lot of secrets in there that we don't understand that yeah. somebody before us understood and it's encoded, like waiting for us to understand. So I'm reading about, um, the, the certain booths that were created. And so they call them, um, Sukk uh, Sukkoth or Sukkots. And it's a, it's actually a Jewish, um, holy day. It's a, a festival that they keep and so they and they all create these little booths and it's very strange because like in in tradition and the imagery they show us they show us creating these little squares or whatever these four cornered squares but when you start reading the text and breaking the words down and then looking into pyramid energy like it's like hold on what there's no like they create these little booths and they go sit in them mm -hmm. and fast and pray like inside of them. And it's like, what, what is that doing? So th there's nothing that's like in there, just, you know, just out of being peculiar versus like, Hey, this is how you channel energy. Cause when you start looking into it, they're not squares. They're not this, they're not a box. It's a, it's a pyramid. It's a triangle. And that's why you can do the research on the triangle energy in the pyramid energy and also look at all of the churches with the steeple or the obelisk that's on top of them that's channeling the energy from above and it's the priest or the pastors are distributing distributing it to the people channeling the energy from the heavens and giving it to the people as they come and pay their tithes and listen in those things so this way of just conducting energy and learning how to do it within a congregation for sure that's happening but also within your own body because you find yourself being the conductor you are the pyramid that connects heaven and earth together right this is so amazing that it's been there the whole time but the imagery they show us throws us off it's like oh yeah. what does that do oh it's just for tradition darling it's all it is like yeah it's a lot. They're a lot. It was all put out there to confuse us. That's what I mean. We have to really go in and trust our intuition, learn how to, to connect with spirit and get real true messages. You know, I, it was a couple of years ago when uh, things started coming out about, Oh, nobody should do connect with spirit, this and that, you know, it's everything's evil. I've never felt anything evil about connecting with spirit ever. And I kind of just all that information going around kind of made me hesitate for a little bit on that aspect. But then I was like, you know, I no nobody's going to get any real answers. If you keep living in fear, let's, I'm just going to do it anyway, you know, and that's what I live by. I just go with what my heart draws me to. And I get the most powerful messages, you know, and for let's go back though, because several years ago, I didn't even know that we had this ability 
I, it, I went to my first reading from a medium and I wanted to connect with my grandmother. I had lost her like 10 years before that. She was like a mother to me. And so I was skeptical, but I wanted to believe. And so during the reading, this lady, um, she was a, a medium from Lilydale, which is a uh, spiritualist community, not far from here. It's up in New York and I'm in Pennsylvania. And uh, so the ladies communicating saying, oh, well, I have an old lady here, you know, her hands are going like crazy, like she's crocheting this or that. And she kept saying things that were hitting the nail on the head with my grandmother. But the skeptic in me was like, well, you know, it's, I, I, my grandmother knew I wasn't truly believing because I was relating it to any old lady, you know? And then pretty soon, about five minutes into the reading, the medium paused and she looked at me and she said, who's Catherine? And at that moment, I could, my whole world changed. I could feel my gray. I was like, that's my grandma. And how does she know that? She, there's no way that she could have known that. And I could feel my grandmother manifesting behind her and standing there. And just the power of everybody that came through my grandfather, who did a lot of bad things when he was on this earth, he came through. Now, why was he with my grandmother? You know, there's people go back to their true identity. Yeah. We're all playing games and roles down here. Even though you're a bad person down here, doesn't mean you were a bad person and you're going to go to hell. A lot of times you're suffering that punishment while you're living here, yeah. I think. You know, so you go back, my grandfather, who was a mean son of a bitch to my grandmother, you know, he said he's waiting for my grandmother to pass away so he can treat her like he, he should have treated her when wow. he was on earth. You know, um, my uncle who committed suicide, he came through. How is that possible? He's supposed to be in hell, right? You know, some of the strongest people I think on our earth are those that commit suicide. How strong do you have to be to make that decision where you don't know what's going to happen, but you don't want to be here anymore? You know, I mean, so there's a lot, it was just so powerful. And I remember saying to the medium, you know, you have the best job in the world. You just proved to me that there's no death, that our loved ones who have passed away are with us all the time. And they're here to help us anytime we need them to. And she said, well, you can do this too. It's like playing the piano. Some people are better at it than others. And I was like, what are you talking about? I didn't know that. I thought you had to be born with this ability. And she said, no. And so she showed me where a spiritualist church was close to me. And I learned mediumship. And uh, that was one of the first things and energy healing down the road. But the mediumship was just so powerful. I'll just tell you real quick, the first story of my connection. So I didn't want that um, anticipation doing a private reading, practicing with people. You know, I didn't want to disappoint them or feel the pressure. So I would just, I just told people, I put a feeler out on Facebook and I said, Hey, I'm practicing mediumship. If you have a loved one in spirit, you want to connect with, send me their picture. And, and so what I would do is I would meditate at night whenever you, the house was quiet for about 20 minutes. And then I would ask my spirit guides to come um, bring this person in spirit to me to communicate on behalf of their loved one. And if they can't find that person to bring somebody to communicate on their behalf. And the very first picture I got was of somebody's grandfather. So I did that whole process and I'm sitting there with my eyes closed, just waiting because it's a process of, for me, it's a whole embodiment of things. I feel energies in my body. I smell things. Um, I, do readings sometimes with my eyes closed. So it's kind of like a dream state. You can see images. Um, and the very first thing I did, I saw a black lab and I was like, this is weird, like a dog. And then I heard the name, uh, teddy bear. And then I smelled Vicks vapor rub. And I was like, this is really weird. You know, I didn't want to say anything to the person, but my teacher taught me um, it doesn't matter if you don't think it makes sense, it's going to make sense to them. So make sure you say, tell them everything that's coming through. And, you know, once you open that door, um, there's more than one person that wants to connect with them. So everybody will come through animals, you know, their past pets, other loved ones, ancestors, even that haven't ever been con contacted before, or it had the ability to speak, you know, so I saw a black lab. I heard the name Teddy bear and I smelled Vicks vapor rub. And I, I told the girl that, and she goes, Oh my God, 
I had a dog that passed away. He was a black lab and he sat on my lap all the time. So I called him my hundred pound teddy bear and he had a lesion on his leg and the vet told me to put Vicks vapor rub on it. And I was like, Oh no shit. Like it shocked me. You know, <laughs> I was like, Oh my God, this is, but that was like the aha moment for me. I was like, this is real. You cannot make this stuff up. It's not like grandma's here and she loves you. It's not basic information like that. You're going to get information from your loved ones to prove to you that they are here with you all the time, but they have to sit by idly and watch your demise. We have free will and we have to call upon them for assistance. That's what they're here for. They're here to assist us to make sure that we learn all the lessons that we're here to learn. And, um, once you do that and, and connect. There's so much power in us. It just amazes me. And that's what I want to teach people is, you know, I started doing readings for people and I started doing energy healings for people. And what I found was people just become reliant on that. And then they're just sucking and sucking the energy away. You know, even my aunt, my aunt, I I was like, you can do this too, trying to teach her. And she goes, well, I'd rather come to you so you can Mm. do it, you know, instead of taking the power and doing it yourself. And so I kind of cut all that off. I stopped doing readings. I stopped doing energy healing. And I want to teach people that they can do it themselves, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's so good. I mean, everything is energy, you know? And it, there is an exchange. And um, everything is them communicating with us in subtle ways. That's why um, we don't think they are because they've been doing it and they've been trying to get our attention for so long, but it's become so normal. Just like, it's like your imagination, you close your eyes and you receive imaginations, the same, you know, images in your mind pop, come to you the same way they've always been. Yeah. But once you know that, hold on, this is something, this isn't from me. It comes, it comes down to that. We are the coils. We are the antennas. And mm-hmm. there is no turning it off or on. You can get better at it. You can key in and get, um, intentional with it, but everything is us communing with the world that existed before us. Everything is from monuments to statues to pictures of your loved ones and what it brings forth the feeling. If mm-hmm. not, it's not working when you see it, when you look at the thing and it invokes a feeling in you that they were connected with and boom, that's the energy that you can key in on who and what they are and what they meant to you and what they represent to you. Because like you said, to someone else, that person may have been a monster. You know, it took me a while to get over that and stop saying that about my ancestors. Cause I'm like, I don't know if I want my grandfather. He was a monster, you know, and this kind of thing. And like, I had to be able to, to, to really dive deep into scripture, to be honest with you, to see that there's a separation that he, you know, you're not your mistakes and there's no more mention. There's no more remembrance of the thing that you did wrong. And the the thing that, you know, counted you out, those things are, there's a separation between good and evil, yin and yang. And the spirit is that which is eternal. And the, the scripture says that God wipes away every tear from your eye. There's no more memory of that, of those treacherous things. Like, come on, what is heaven? What is beauty? if you have to bring those things with you. And I firmly believe it. And the scripture continually teaches that. And then here we are, if we know that we can experience it instead of being scared and like, you know, thinking it's a demon and that kind of stuff. This I'll I'll give you and everyone else this. This is what it's, it's talking about. The same way that Jesus taught on how to commune with him from the other side is the same way from every culture that they've been communing with their ancestors and saints and angels and team and really whoever you know to have the picture to make mention to say their name and to make um to bring their memory up because their memory invokes a feeling in you that invokes them to you immediately yes in egypt it said this that resurrection is that there is no death that the person is resurrected and born again with you the moment you mention their name. Yeah. The moment you say their name, they're with you. And I love the scriptures. And I'm, I keep bringing it back there, but he's like, hey, say my name. Remember me on earth. If you do that, I'll remember you in the ethers. Do you, people, your grandmother is saying the same thing. 
remember me. I'm going to remember you out here. I got some pull. I got from, remember us, this do in remembrance of me. That's a reason there's statues up of all of these founding fathers and all that's somebody's grandfather. Yeah. Who their energy and their influence is still accessible to them in this moment. Yeah. This is how this thing works. And it's from Genesis to Revelation in the Bible. And it's really in every holy book. They're all saying the same things. And even if a, a lack of holy books, throw them all out the window. When you sit in silence and pray and meditate, that's what we go back to. Infinite energy, zero point, all not in the past, not in the future, but channeled in the now moment. Tesla learned to do this. Mediums and channel and, and psychics have learned to do this, how to pick up on subtle energy, subtle messages. And like you said, when it, starts revealing itself to you and you're like, oh my God, I didn't, I'm a skeptic. Like I didn't know it was going to be that clear and it is. And it's so fun and it's so groundbreaking that we're not alone. We do have a mm -hmm. team. We do have angels and guides and guardians and all of that amazing stuff. So knowing that, you know, it should, it should, you know, kickstart something in you to want to connect and just to ask, seek and knock and not be afraid. Yeah, it's, it, it's sad for us when we lose somebody um, here in this 3D world, because especially if you're not connected with spirit, but if you are connected with spirit, you know that every time a loved one passes away, it's an addition to your spirit army that's over there to help you. And they are way more powerful on the other side than they ever were down here. They can help you far more from the other side than they were ever able to help you down here. They know everything. They know why you made decisions in your life. They know why you are the way you are now. And, you know, the stupidest thing is just to sit there and not, not call upon them and, and wallow in your self-pity you know, we are strong and we need to reconnect to that, you know, ask for assistance. That's what they're there for, you know, mm -hmm. and where you, where you focus, what is it? Um, energy flows where your focus goes, mm -hmm. you know, so we need to start doing that. And there's so many distractions in this lifetime. They're intentional distractions. We work our lives away. Um, you know, I, it wasn't until I quit my job out of the blue because I did not feel, feel fulfilled. Yeah. Um, I had been working for 25 years in the restaurant industry. I was an event coordinator, organizing weddings and things. And I just didn't like what I was doing. And I remember saying to the owner one day, I don't you think there's more to life than this? You know, and I worked 60, 70 hours a week. I didn't have time for anything, raising two kids and I quit my job out of the blue. And within two weeks, I had three part-time jobs working half the amount of hours, making the same amount of money. And they were all fulfilling jobs. But the key was quitting my job because if I was still looking for jobs while I was holding that job, there was no place for that job to go. Yeah. You have to open up that space in order for that energy to find you, you know, and that's how manifestation works. You have to open up space and let me tell you this manifestation story. So, um, when I, a couple years ago, <clears throat> when our pyramids started getting really popular, um, Charlie and I were going to different expos. And, um, so I was doing back-to-back -back expos every weekend and my ex and I were ex now, but at the time we were together and we had been together for 12 years, but the past five years of that, he was like a roommate. Like we were both just going our opposite ways, living in the same house, not, you know, really sharing anything other than that. But every time I would bring up the subject of, you know, I think we should separate, he would get irate. Typical narcissist, you know, he wanted control. He, he would threaten to burn the house down, like just off the wall things like that. So I just stopped communicating with them because I didn't want to deal with that. So I came back from, um, one of my expos and I was sitting in the living room and I remember looking around the living room and I was like, I don't have any of my own pyramids in my own house because I, they sold so fast. I just didn't have any in my own house. So I went out to my workshop and I had a few of them out there. So I brought them into the house and I set them on my desk and my desk was in my living room. And <clears throat> I started looking around the living room and I imagined myself 
taking down all of our pictures of us together and putting them up in the attic with the face towards the wall so nobody could ever see them again. And right then I heard in my mind, he'll never leave unless he has a girlfriend, someone to take care of him. And so right then I placed an order with the universe, with my pyramids. I said, find him a girlfriend. And that was that. I completely forgot about that until a few weeks later. I had went to a couple more expos, came back, and then he was at work. And I was like, I'm just going to mention it again. You know, so he'll probably get irate again. But I text him and I said, hey, you know, obviously our relationship has fizzled. Can we talk about it? And he instantly replied, yes, you know, and I was like, well, that's weird. And I figured he'd come home, jump on the lawnmower and just avoid me, you know, but he came right in, sat down and him and I talked like you and I are talking very calmly, you know, adults, adults just talking. And we both mutually agreed that it'd be best for us to separate. He said, just, (laughs) he said, give him a couple weeks, you know, to get his stuff out or whatever. And he was going to move in with his friend until he found his own place. Well, the day he moved out, I had a dream that night that he had a girlfriend and it was specifically this girl that he worked with three nights in a row. I had, uh, it was pretty much the same dream. It was a different dream, but the same outcome that he had a girlfriend and it was this girl. So that's one reason that him and I didn't get along because I started finding this, you know, spirituality and stuff and doing things that made me happy and it freaked him out. (laughs) So he didn't want to hear about any of the stuff, but I texted him and I said, do you have a girlfriend? I keep having a dream that you have a girlfriend. Do you have a girlfriend? And um, he finally, he finally admitted that, yes, he had a girlfriend and I couldn't be mad. You know, that's the only reason that he was out of my life was because I manifested this girlfriend for him. <laughs> and I just laughed about it. Cause I was like, wow, this is how powerful this stuff is. You know, your energy goes where you're going to focus your intention and Like I said, I just can't keep saying it enough that we are powerful. We can do whatever we want to. Yeah. I mean, there's even your little, um, you know, the imagination in the dreams and people say, well, it's just my imagination playing tricks or whatever. It was like, no, there was somebody was trying to tell you something in the dream state when you were, I mean, what else is meditation Mm than like hacking and tapping into the dream state and being intentional about it, where we go to get messages and downloads and inspirations of you know, the dreams that we want to create and manifest into this realm come to us in the hours of the night. That's when spirit speaks. That's where God speaks to us. And you're asleep and you're getting these dreams. And it was something that you needed to do, something that was going on in your life that you was able to position yourself for. Um, and it ended up working out Yeah, in everybody's favor. Let's say that. So spirit God is always speaking, man. And it's just how much are we listening? How do we learn to listen? And it's not, it's so funny because maybe religion or, or spirituality or whatever, a lot of, a lot of people tell you there's only one way you Mm got to do it this way. This is the only way you do it any other way. This, you know, you're not, this is the best way. There is no best way. Like the the, the best way is the way that works. Mm -hmm. The best way is the way that works. You know, I have, I've had people come to me. I was even thinking about it this morning, meeting with a guy, a, a young Christian guy um, from another country. He was in, in, in our country and he wanted to meet and we got coffee and stuff. And he was uh, kind of just going through my influence and trying to like correct me and like, Hey, there's a better way to do it. Yeah. There is no better way. Like my, it's the way that it's working. If it wasn't working, then show me a better way that's working. Your way is good too. Praise be to God as long as it's working, listen, this is, this has been shown to you, but if all of these other things are working too, then we need to rejoice and double down on all of the things that are working. That's helping people. That's, that's helping people find healing, to find God, to find love, to find bliss in their life, you know? So man, honor everybody and their ways. And once you start to do that, maybe become intrigued about their ways Yes. then new ways will be shown to you, maybe even in your own order, in your own tradition, the way that you're operating and how you're doing the same thing. It's available for you to do too. Yeah. It, I, I, this is what keeps me up at night. 
Yeah. Well, I know when I first um, put that feeler out on Facebook, looking for clients or whatever people to do readings for, my aunt responded and said, you know, I feel it's my Christian duty to tell you you're going to hell. You're not allowed to communicate with spirits, you know, and I mainly said, well, I appreciate your your comment, but um, I don't believe that. I, I feel nothing but good out of this. And I continue doing readings and I just got saw the profound healings that it did give people. It is a, a great tool to do, to use for, to help people get out of this 3d reality and realize that there's more out there, but once they become attached to you and want more and more, that's when you kind of have to shut them off and teach them to do it themselves, you know, but, um, yeah, I would, I wouldn't do it any other way. And, you know, it, I, I always thought of that. I was never a religious growing up. I, my, I remember my mom and dad had a huge uh, book. My mom was Catholic. It was a huge Bible and it had lots of beautiful pictures in it. And I would always flip through that and look at it and read the stories. And, you know, I, I started doing my own, um, my own prayer, you know, the father's prayer or whatever. And, um, but I always remember going outside and looking and I was this place, I'd look up at the sky and I was like, this place is so effing weird. Like, I don't feel like we're from here. And I feel like I always felt like there was something bigger. And every time I'd go to church, I'd leave more confused than when I went there in the first place, because it was always with like a friend here and there or something, you know, my mom didn't go to church anymore. My dad was meaner than heck. He wouldn't even have opened that Bible. So um, I was always just trying to figure out what was going on down here. And once I connected to spirituality, I just kind of found my place. But then I started realizing, you know, like you had said that there's so many other religions and, you know, every, so let's say there's 800 other religions. And if every other religion believes, if you don't believe in my religion, then you're going to go to hell. Then obviously we're all in hell right now. Right. I mean, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. <laughs> So it's either that, or like you said, just leave people be, let them, it, it's where your attention go. It's, it's a tool. I think it's like anything. It's a tool to help you realize how powerful you are. Yeah. Everything yeah. is, everything yeah. is a tool. And, um, and, and they're here to assist and, you know, help us here. That's what tools are here to help you get the job done. And we have so many, you know, in the Christian thing, I, I remember, cause I'm, I mean, I was scared looking into this stuff and interviewing psychics but it all this stuff came down to just having conversations with people and seeing that we weren't different after all like the church like you can't talk to those people no they're demon possessed they're gonna it's like man these are regular people that god loves and jesus died for so how about in a, a, a conversation maybe i can connect with them and show them a, a, a jesus that loves them maybe that and that totally ha happened and happens but you know, you, we'd approach it with this caution and we've been told to like, watch out. But then it's so much caution and red tape that they never move past it. And so I have my own cautions too. I don't, I've dealt with demons. I've de dealt with, you know, malicious spirits. They're real. They're in the church too. You know, that's ne neither here nor there. But when you step into this and you've got these things telling you no, and you have to question, you have to ask, how bad do you want it? Do you want it, you know, is it calling to you? What is it? And as long as you're having an inner dialogue, which everyone, I won't say everyone is, sociopaths, they say don't. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and narcissists do, but it's always about them and never about the collective, right? So come yeah. on. So if you're having the inner dialogue, right? And you're asking, you have these parameters that you set up or somebody set up for you, namely religion and namely Christians. You know, I would always say this, just getting started, just to ask this, they say, you know, ask me about contacting the dead and people losing children and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, there's a hole in, in their heart and they don't know how to fill it. And, but I would use caution at the beginning. And I would say, listen, yeah, the Bible says, do not con contact the dead. Don't contact the dead. And everybody said, yeah, it doesn't. But I said, but, but wait, what if, <laughs> what if the dead contact you? Yeah. What if they contact you? It's like, oh, yeah. well, I don't. So I would always start there just to, hey, you don't go looking for it. But if it comes to you, you know, just say hello. But long story, story short, it goes back to what I said. Everything coming from antiquity in Egypt, they're not dead. Exactly. I was just going to say that. Yeah. Especially if you're a Christian. If you're yeah. like, you should know that death has been defeated. So your yeah. loved ones aren't dead if they're in Christ. They they have stepped into everlasting life. Yeah. 
So to talk of- to them is not talking to the dead. Oh, but on the contrary, you to go get, you to turn on your television and get your dietary and what to buy, what to wear. My God, don't get me started on what to wear. <laughs> That's killing you. That's coming from soulless, deadless entities that are running these lower realms, right? Mm-hmm. So those of us who have anyone who has crossed over and, and went behind the veil, they're here to help waiting. And it's a tragedy that they've scared us so much that the very things that we need that have been designed from Genesis to Revelation to tap in, they told us that it's demonic, but we're down here dealing with the demonic. Yes. Like, come on. Yeah. A lot of, um, a lot of friends who are mediums said that, um, when they communicate with the other side, um, the spirits will tell them that they are more alive than they've ever felt in their life that we're actually the dead ones. Yeah. And that makes sense. Yeah. It's hard to understand, but I think more people are asking that question, Mm -hmm. you know, and looking around like, hold on, how, who am I and how did I get here and where am I going? Yeah. You know, near death experiences, podcasts and talks like these are definitely becoming more popular. Um, and for good reason, people are asking questions and guess what? They're getting answers. Yeah. So keep asking questions, man. And you'll get the answers. I mean, Jesus, like that, that was his thing. Ask, seek, knock, ask the questions. The only answer is a response with another question. But in that, you'll find your truth. You'll find the thing that that you're looking for is already there. Yeah. You're not becoming. You already are. Everything is within you because that's how this stuff is passed down. And, um, you know, it's this. I say it's fun. It's, um, you know, we have we have so much that that are here to help. And that's so encouraging. So encouraging. And the key is when you go inside, you will find your truth. Your truth is different than other truths. Just because you find your truth doesn't mean that what somebody else is experiencing isn't true for them. Yeah. You know, there are numerous truths out there. So that's a, Hey, that's a big debated one that'll get you in trouble from a lot of people, but it's something that I continually say as well. And it gets me in trouble Mm -hmm. or truth. Cause there's this thing of there's only one truth. And I get, I get, I get what they're saying. Right. But to, but how facetious is it to think that your truth is the truth? Because that's what they're implying when Mm -hmm. they check you and challenge you. I said, you know what I'm saying? Live your truth, man. Live your truth. Cause your truth ain't my truth, but that's always in implying that yours is wrong and theirs is right. Yeah. Well, we all, we all received different programming. As soon as you're born, you're born into a family that starts programming you. You start meeting friends that start programming you. You start watching your own favorite movies and shows that start programming you. So everybody is programmed at a different frequency. It just makes sense that we find our a different frequency to get out of that and back to reset ourselves. You know, we're all not going to utilize the same frequency to reset ourselves. So that's, that's your truth. I don't believe that that's your truth. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it works. Yeah. (laughs) So, I mean, I know we've, we've, I think that, I think the conversation is there. We went from talking about, you know, pyramid energy and and harnessing and channeling good energy, because I think by default, a lot of us are channeling bad. There's things and parameters set up where it's just like bad, negative, lower energy. So if we know that there's higher, beautiful energy, that, that first of all, we have experiments showing that it brings life that it gives life and it gives life in abundance, then I think mm-hmm. we should double down and just look into it a little bit more. Do experiments, do experiments with your words, with your, with your, uh, with your intention, with your imagination. And just like you've seen, you can manifest and create something in, in this world. Yeah. Christians even demonize that. I don't even know why, because it's all like, come on, you reap what you sow, the scripture talks about, but they would demonize that term manifestation. And they give it over to the demonic or new age. Just do this. It's a, it's a universal law. And if you can manifest something, manifest something good. Yeah. Manifest beauty, manifest peace, manifest wealth to distribute, to, to help manifest tools, 
manifest beautiful ideas, right? That's by default that we're all doing it. It just so happens to be that there's a lot of people who think they're doing good that are manifesting darkness by default. And it ain't their fault. They've been trained that, that way. They were told that, that 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 was the truth and it has become their truth because of that. And trust me, it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be that way. Not by any yeah. means. Well, like I said, you know, we are, a lot of this is being hidden from us intentionally, our true powers. You know, there was, I think it was in 400 AD, Constantine removed 25 spiritual texts from the Bible, which showed us what our true powers were, um, you know, and it just, it just escalates from there. You know, if we don't see the information and then they teach us, you know, mold us into what they want us to be all through school and you don't know what to believe anymore. Yeah. So, and so you show up as an employee. Yeah. <laughs> Unfulfilled. Listen, if you're an employee, listen, everybody's got a different calling. Everybody's got a different truth, but you knew there was something in you. That's, that's first of all, that's what I was wanting to go to. You were asking questions within, is there more to life than, than working 60 hours a week at a job? I don't want to be at. Yeah. And, 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 and there's, there were probably parameters that popped up in your mind as voices, as people, maybe they had faces and you're, and they said, yep, that's all you, this is what we're supposed to do. You chose this job. You're too old. You should have started young. like, listen, you, it, there is no shortage of uh, words that are trying to keep you in that place that, that are, have been designed way longer than you've been here to keep you in line and in order to, to do those things. But it's asking the questions and then to keep asking. It's one, th one thing to ask it once, is it? And then you ask yeah. it again and you ask it again. And then you, and now you're programming your subconscious and you're looking around at people just like you doing what they love for mm -hmm. 60 hours a week. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? You get to do what you love for 60 yeah. hours a week. You but did. the key is, is to release that. You need to get, right. you need it's to make a vacant spot for that new job to come into before you're going to find what you really want to do. And it's risky. It's scary. But every day people are living in fear over yeah. ridiculous programming stuff, false things on the news and this and that, you know, just disconnect from all of that. Yeah. If you're going to fear something, then just fear, um, for the loss of your job real quick, you know, just, but do it. It's like jumping off a cliff, just freaking do it and see what happens, <laughs> you know, yeah. and more good things will come to you. Yeah. If you position your heart to help, to good, to delight in something that's good, you'll find, like you said, good things are coming. I believe in the good things coming. And, uh, and if you're doing that to help it, if you're, if you want to do good to help people, come on, there's, there's not like, we need more of that. The Bible says the that the um, harvest is plentiful, plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray that God will send forth laborers in the vineyard. Like we need like better podcasters out here. We need better people who, you know, are doing music, like creating good music. We, there's, a, there's a shortage of people using their gifts and abilities and talents to help yeah. and to heal. So step up and say, hey, I'll do it. If you'll take me off of this job, I don't want to be at all. I'll create something beautiful. Listen, tell the universe, tell God. And I guarantee you, man, he has a beautiful way of lining all this stuff up and opening the doors and showing you which one, which ones to walk through. Cause that's my story too. That's why I'm saying it with such passion. You know, I'm speaking to myself through, through this camera and through the, this microphone, the younger version of me who was, you know, driving the truck for years and digging ditches and cutting grass. And, you know, you're getting too old. All of those, I'm not that's what was in my head. That's what was trying to keep me, you know, stuck in a, in a place that I didn't want to be. And mm -hmm. uh, at a dead end job that I was, felt like my destiny and my dream was going to die with me. Mm -mm. That's the nightmare. What scares you more? You dying with your song in you? You going to the grave without singing your song and living your bliss? At least trying. At least try. That's where we're at. So ask and you'll find again that it ain't just angels and, and spirits that are help helping you it's your ancestors it is it yes. is it is the universe everything in existence peaks its head up you know really you know how powerful you are you know how loved you are cool we respond 
to love. We respond to beauty. You got so many friends. You got so many people that are rooting for you. It would, it would, it would scare the whatever out of you yeah. to really know how much life, love, and information that is around you 24-7 in the clouds, in the dirt, in the wind, in the trees, the infinite intelligence that's communicating with us. My God. And you'll feel it. Partner you'll with feel them. it. See what happens. Yeah, you will feel it. It's amazing. You're yeah. show, telling us techniques on how to feel it and harness it and just say, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Yeah. I know going back to that reading that I had after that first mediumship reading I had, um, I just felt when I left there that there was a team of spirits with me at all times. Like I felt like there was 20 some people walking with me, you know, that I didn't have to fear anything. And the next day I walked a dog for a man every day. And I was walking, I always walked the same, the same way around the city. And for some reason, when I got to this road that I usually cross, um, I heard that I need to stay on this side. And so I did, I stayed on this side, which I never do. And I got halfway down the block and a little S10 pickup truck comes screaming around the corner, whips over into the opposite lane and slams into the bank across, right directly across from where me and the dog were at the time, where we would have been if I would have crossed the street, slammed right into him, into the bank. And then back, we had to jump out of the way because it backed up. Like, it's just crazy. This information, this protection, this love, I mean, this power that you get when you can connect to this stuff, mm -hmm. you know? And I know one thing that holds people back, I just wanted to touch on this real quick, is first of all, people don't live in the now. They are constantly thinking about the past or the traumas that they've experienced or focusing on the future when right now is the only time that life happens. Right directly now is when life is happening. And, um, you know, one thing that holds people back a lot is the traumas in their life. And one way that I overcame that, you know, I had a, a bad relationship where typical narcissist, you know, he would, he was bad though. He would be holding a knife to my throat one minute saying he was going to kill me. And then five minutes later, he'd be on his knees crying, you know, for me to forgive him. And I knew he had a mental disorder. He just wouldn't get help for it. And he was causing me more chaos <laughs> than I wanted. So, um, I ended up finally after five years of being with him and having two kids with him getting out of that relationship. And it was a big ordeal, a lot of drama and things happened, but for the years after that, I was like, I'm a loser magnet. You know, that's all I kept thinking. I'm just, I attract the biggest losers in my life. I'm a loser magnet. I even had a pin that I would wear sometimes when I go out with my friends drinking that said loser magnet, you know, what the heck was I doing? And, um, I was drawing them to me, you know, just by focusing on that. I didn't realize that at the time I do now, but once I got into spirituality, <clears throat> I remember learning that, you know, we all incarnate with the same group of souls in every lifetime. And before we incarnate <clears throat> on the other side, we plan the lessons that we want to learn in this lifetime. And it's the ones who hurt us the most in this lifetime are really the ones who love us the most from the other side, because when we're planning our lessons, they step forward and they say, you know, that's a really going to be a really hard lesson for you to learn. I will be the bad guy to teach you that, you know, I'll be the one to step forward and teach you that to make sure that you learn that lesson. And they don't know that down here. Of course, most of them won't know that until they get to the other side again. So it doesn't mean to keep connected to them while you're down here in the 3d, but it gave me that opportunity to release and forgive. Yeah. You know, and that was a big part of my trauma. It was forgiving him, you know, why blaming myself for him doing those things to me and this and that, but it gave me that opportunity to release that energy and, you know, me, he might not know it down here, but he does love me. So. Yep. You got to make it make sense and, yeah. and it, it will, and it only has to make sense to you, you know, to make, so, so that yeah. you're not carrying it so that you're not, you know, cause then the question, you know, the questions come. You know, did I deserve this? Come on. I got to stay in this relationship because yeah, he's only doing it because he loves me. Like all these weird things come in. So 
yeah, the, the healing and the understanding. Um, I've been diving deep in, in the scriptures this morning, actually, and just looking into the concepts of, you know, demons and things like that. Like they're paired with people to help them. Mm -hmm. Like, and even though the help might hurt, listen, it's, it's working something good in you and you're going to have a compassion afterwards. There's a, there's a level of compassion we need in the earth. And the only way you're going to receive it is to go through something that gives you supernatural compassion, supernatural love. Like you're going to have to go hungry for so many days until you have this overwhelming burden naturally and empathy to help people that are hungry, to help people that are starving. You know, and so we go through these tough times and these tough lessons in our lives that that really come back to bless us. And the idea of a demon or a daemon or something like that, people would think demonic, get rid of it. It's like, and I used to think that way. And maybe there's some that you should, trust me. But yeah. what if something's trying to help you and it's just a hard lesson to learn? Yeah. It's like so in you school. Have, you, you have had to teachers walk that were hard, they taught hard lessons and we didn't like them, but Oh, yeah. also had teachers that let you do anything and you loved them and let mm -hmm. you get away and do it do anything no 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 in the real world you can't just do anything and get away with it there's hard lessons that you have to learn you know hard love if you will so like you said the people that show up and play these roles or whatever you know they come back that when everything goes back into the box right when all the pieces go back in or when the or when the, the final curtain call, when all the actors come back on the stage and you see the villain next to the lover and and next to the children, like they're all they take this bow for the curtain call. They're playing different roles and they'll come back in the next scene and even play different characters. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm telling you, you know, I think you... the pyramid energy connects. It it does connect to that scene, if you will. Yeah. For sure. Uh, you know, you have to dance in the darkness to really appreciate the light. And some of the most genuinely compassionate, loving people on this earth have suffered the most trauma any of us could even endure. Imagine enduring, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's those lessons. We need to welcome the lessons. You know, we can't just live in a stagnant energy and be afraid to go out. Oh, I don't, I can't drive because I could be in an accident or I don't. So I'll just stay home all the time. You know, you can't, have that mentality because that's not truly living and you're going to just you're going to stagnate with it you know you're not going to be any use to anybody and we're all here for a reason we need to realize our power we need to figure out why we're here we need to figure out who we are um you know nobody's telling us and like i said it goes back to your intuition we need to start trusting ourselves we're the only yep. people that we can really trust yep you're right you're absolutely right. And then once we learn from that, then we can come together and just share. It's not about teaching anybody. It's not about being right. It's about you being able to tap in for yourself. And then we come together and share what we've been finding. And what we are finding is that we're all saying the same thing, just using different words from different places, from different backgrounds, different languages, but we're all saying the same thing. And once we realize that we're all in the same situation together, maybe we'll work together to get each other out of it. And I don't care what language you use, what holy book, it, like, it, I don't care. They're all beautiful. They're all awesome. If an, if a beautiful person's reading it, if an awesome person's reading it, if you have a dreadful person, if you have a malicious person reading any of those texts, including mediumship and spiritual orgone energy, they're going to, that, that's a, that's a, a tool can be used for good and for bad. Like it doesn't matter. The Bible is a tool. The you know, a hammer is a tool. If mm -hmm. that falls into the hands of, a, of the wrong person, every look out, look out. There's going to be victims everywhere, whether it's the Bible, whether it's money, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So I, I love it. Um, and we could talk about this all day. Let people know where they can go to, uh, to check out your work, to check out some of the, the, the pyramids and where they can purchase and all that good stuff. Yeah. So my website is pyramid surge, um, S U R G E.com. Um, my sister sites are on there. So you'll get the link at the top for Stargate pyramids. If you want to buy the meditation pyramids as well as the capstones and accessories, I also have orgone pyramids on there as well. And 
um, some different magnetic amplifiers. And I know you touched on electroculture. I actually am delving into more electroculture products as well. And that's one of the reasons I'll be making the big <clears throat> wooden frame meditation pyramids um, to utilize for electroculture purposes this summer. And I'll be doing some experiments. Um, the Pyramid Science Foundation is where you can find our research and the different topics um, that we'd like to delve into. Um, you can donate there as well as even help with some of the research if you're interested in doing things like that. You know, I did an experiment last year with polywogs and a couple of different plants ended up in there as well. So it was just an amazing um, experiment. You know, the polywogs got a lot larger than the ones without the pyramid. The plants and the one with the pyramid just were astounding. And you can see that on our YouTube channel um, for the Pyramid Science Foundation. Um, Charlie and I both have a live stream every Wednesday, usually, um, for the Pyramid Science Foundation on our YouTube channel. And my link tree and all the links are on pyramidsurge.com. So it's easy for everybody to find. And then I'll also soon be starting my own podcast um, uh, called Alter Ether. Um, I have some great uh, guests. You know, I'd like to have you on, Derek. We could talk for days, I'm sure, <laughs> on a lot of different topics. But um, but that's what I want to do. I want to start sharing this knowledge with the world and empowering people, teaching them just how powerful we really are and how to easily grasp it. Not, you know, like Charlie and I make meditation pyramids, but um, Charlie gives people the, the directions for free on how to make your own if you can't afford to buy one. You know, so there's a lot of different things we need to start helping each other because we need the unity again. We need to get into the unity, the community. Um, and that's what I want to teach people. Awesome. Yeah, I'm with it, my friend. Thank you so much for, for coming on, hanging out. And when you get your podcast going, let me know. I'll gladly come on. Awesome. Continue this conversation elsewhere. <laughs> yes. Awesome. <laughs> Appreciate it, my friend. Thanks. You. Thanks. We'll do it again. Yes, thank you so much. It was a it was a pleasure. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. I will um get this ready probably soon. This will be going up okay. next two days, most likely, and uh get it sent out on my stuff and I'll send you a link when everything's up. Okay, awesome, awesome. Now do you want <clears throat> I know I didn't get any products to you. Um uh, right now but i do have some you, i'll be sending in the mail within the next couple on, days do, do not feel obligated you know yeah, yeah. well i was going to ask if you'd like to be an affiliate and have a coupon code because you might as well you can profit off of some of that and it can help you with your different events and things as well i mean yeah. it's up to you yeah i could check it out and look into it and and yeah if you want to send send it over i'll definitely look into it and see okay I'm well really, i know I'm, I'm really weird about you know the affiliate code i get a, you know i could do a lot of uh, shows on here but I mean if I could definitely put it in the link for sure you know on the website yeah, whatever you want to do I was just saying so I know um uh, in 2020 um JCK she's in Australia we were on her podcast and she really kick-started our business nice. um and we had so many sales going on I mean it was just freaking crazy awesome. we kind of it just we got stuck behind the production line so I kind of got burnt out on the making pyramids so mm -hmm. I kind of just paused for a while but now I'm back into the swing of things and I just I'd rather have some people in the United States that know how powerful they are and stuff so mm -hmm. but once I get the pyramids to you you know if you yeah. decide to become an affiliate or anything let me yeah, know. I'll check them out for sure okay I'll get to it if it resonates we'll do it Awesome. And then also, I didn't mention it on here, but I wasn't able to travel to India. I ended up getting sick like the day before I was supposed to fly out. Wow. And I, um, that was a huge event. They were going to have like 50,000 people there every day. Mm. But could you imagine a huge meditation event? It's a huge meditation pyramid that seats 10,000 people and they have 50,000 people attend every day for 11 days in a row. I mean, can you imagine getting something like that? together in the United States. So I just, I was contacted by um, uh, Perry, the girl who invited me over there. Her father is the one that started the pyramid movement in India and he passed away two years ago. Um, she has her own organization in the United States now, um, which is part of his, it's Pyramid Spiritual Society's movement. And there, she just asked me to be the United States ambassador for their work. So they utilize the Giza geometry pyramid, but they're gonna be building huge meditation pyramids all over the United States to house 10,000 some meditators. She just moved to San Diego. She's gonna have an event in North Carolina soon. So 
I'll, I'll just I'll keep you updated on that work. Right. I think that's something. Yeah, I'm be definitely looking at looking into um, doing more stuff, especially this year. I'm already starting to book things. We've been doing stuff online for years, and it's time to start stepping out, doing events and stuff. So we're already lining up a couple of events. So yeah, it'd be awesome. Send it to me. Yeah. And then if you send me some information, well, actually I could pull it off the internet if you want, but we have a newsletter that we send out not to a whole bunch. I think there's about 2000 people, but I can advertise your event in there as well. If you'd like. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Well, awesome. Thank All you right. so much, dear. All right. Thank you. And I, like I said, when I get this up, I'll send it over to you. So just okay. keep, you can keep up with me over email or, or however. Okay. Well, lots of love to you. Many blessings. You too. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Give it up for Lisa Richards, everybody. Such a good talk. Make sure y'all check out her work and what she's bringing to the table. Um, the pyramid energy, being able to, to channel and to direct it, free energy. You know, if you look into the positive and negatively charged ions that are just permeating the atmosphere at all times, and how we can harness it and how we are harnessing it to aid our body, even through the breath and how we're connecting with these cells and microorganisms. My goodness, when you can try to be intentional, to try to harness and just do little experiments, harness it with your words, harness it with vibrational frequency, which is what your words are, speaking life, becoming life, so that there's this life in abundance flowing to you and through you. That's what channeling is. That's all I mean about channeling, that the infinite energy, the Holy Spirit, is flowing to you and through you out into the world. Come on. And if you like the whole thing about being intentional about it, this is happening by default. And people, we don't, we just don't know it. They stole the magic and made us think that it was evil to be intentional. Everything that we're doing, everything that, that's being taught to us and pumped through us through television and through media, through the government, there's nothing new. None of this is new. Somebody said this first. Somebody did this first. This is not new. We've been here before. We're going to be here again. So become intentional with that. Ask, seek, and knock so that the energy and information that is being channeled to you and through you, you can become a conduit for that, which is good. You can hold up a strainer or a net or something to cut off those portals, those windows to the etheric realms that are here to create destruction. Like, how do you create and destroy? It's what we do. Do it, create beauty. One who creates beautiful music, come on. Something that is life-giving so that there's so much coming to you and through you, it's coming out of you. There's enough to go around for everybody. There was so much of this energy in the person of Jesus that the lady with an issue of blood, this lady at there walking through this crowd, this is in the Bible, walking through a crowd, all of these people in the street, a lady was dealing with this internal bleeding problem, knew that all she had to do was get close to Jesus and touch the hem of his garment. If I can but touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. She moved through the crowd. She reached out her hand, stretched forth and touched the hem of his garment. And it says that when she did, she was immediately healed and that Jesus felt it. Jesus felt the virtue, the power, leave his body and flow to that woman through her faith that met in action, that he had this beauty of God, the Holy Spirit in him to such a degree that he could feel it going out to others and it actually healing them. Did he get depleted? No, he felt it. And I think that we're doing the same thing by default. There's people touching us and pulling us and we're, we're in, in the 
marketplace and out just rubbing shoulders and auras with people that we're picking up on stuff. We're empathic. We're feeling, we're reading people's thoughts and the so-called psyche. All of that's happening by default. So if you know that, then you can put on your spiritual armor. Then you can be intentional. Well, I don't want, I don't want that rubbing off on me. And if it does, I'm going to give it to God. I'm going to cleanse myself because this isn't mine. I want beauty. I want life. I want love. Be intentional of the energy that's coming to you and through you. And I think that that's what we're talking about here with pyramid energy. And it is all in the Bible. I, <laughs> there's festivals, the boot festival of booths. You look into this stuff, man. This stuff isn't just in there for no reason. There is a spiritual connection to everything because we are spirit. We are spirit. We are a soul and a spirit that have come together in marriage and we're inside of a body right now experiencing this realm. Make the best of it. Make good memories because that is eternal. Before we end today, I want to say a prayer. I want to extend to those who are struggling specifically in marriage, for those who are living with a spouse who doesn't see eye to eye, you may be having a spiritual awakening and nobody understands you. And how hard is it when that person who doesn't understand you is in your own household? I know there's many of you. I talk to you. I know who you are. And I've felt like I was there before um, to a degree where you're experiencing awakening, you're experiencing God, and nobody understands you. So you bring it to your spouse, and they don't understand you. And, and it can be hard, because maybe that's all you want to do fasting and praying and researching and all this stuff. And it doesn't feel reciprocative. Um, and it can, it can drive a wedge in between marriages. I'll say that. I want to say that. And I can't say that without saying that my wife um, has been such a blessing to me in the past. She's always been a blessing. Let's get that straight. But within the past two months, month and a half, um, there's hope. There is hope. You know, we get caught and we get stuck in the mundane and doing life and going to work. And then things are happening. We're brushing shoulders with people, you know, trauma stuck in the body that makes you act a certain type of way. It's not you. The energy that was coming to you didn't come through you and it just got stuck in you. It's not who you are. And I can't wait for you guys to hear her talk about it. She's been talking about it on our Patreon, on our hangouts every Thursday and Sunday. So for those of you who want to get the backstage access and hang out with us on that, she's been joining all of those. She'll be on the podcast soon. Um, but man, to, to see like that energy left her. This stuck, hurt, trauma was in her for years and it left her. And she was never a bad person. She was not like, she was amazing. She's, she's my other half. She completes me. Like it's our, our, we've had a good marriage. We've had a great marriage, but now we've have like, it feels like we just got married again. And I tell, I want to encourage you with that to say that God is in the business of making all things new. Jesus says, behold, I've come to make all things new. Every day is new. The mercy, the beauty, listen to me, every breath is new. And all you have to do is say thank you. To so breathe in, be intentional with that energy that you're breathing. Come on and just say thank you for the breath. 
And as you breathe in, allow it to absorb and go directly to the places within your body that needs a touch, whatever it is. There may be places in your body, in your mind, in your psyche that need a touch that you don't even know about. But when you breathe in and you're intentional and you say thank you and you allow it to go forth and do that, you'll be touched in ways that you never know you needed it. There's stuck energy that's become so familiar with you. It's a spirit that has become familiar. You think it's a part of you. It's not. And if you want to release that now, I want you to breathe in with me. When I count down to three, you're going to breathe in through the nostrils, hold it for just a moment, and then exhale through your mouth. And when you exhale through the mouth, I want you to release and get rid of all of that stuck energy, that stagnant energy, those memories that have been stuck with you to release it because God comes to make all things new with each breath. Your marriages, your relationships, your finances, it's coming to make that new as well. Ready? Three, two, one. Breathe in really deep. Say thank you, thank you, thank you. Just hold it and then release. Three, two, one, release it. Never to return, never to return, never be the same. In Jesus' mighty name, in the name of Yahshua ben Yosef, I bless you now, Father, that you would pour out your spirit on all who are listening right now. Comforter, I ask you to comfort hearts right now. Do what only you can do to my friends who are going through a rough patch. Father, I ask you to encourage now, send forth encouraging spirits, the Holy Ghost. We thank you so much. God, I pray for marriages. I pray that the scripture says that what God has joined together, that no man can set asunder. No man can tear apart. God, I pray that marriages come together in such a new way that you return the joy. You return the the romance, you you return them to that childlike awe and wonder to be together. For those who are questioning divorce, Father, I pray that you remove those thoughts even now. But then you show them the manifestation of what you can do and of what you've done once in their life. You can do it again. Father, I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Listen, some of you who are listening, it's not a marriage relationship with a significant other. It's a marriage relationship with the person of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, that God would restore unto you the joy of your salvation from whence you first believe. God, that you stir it up even now. Peace be upon them right now. They feel it in their belly moving, stirring, stirring, stirring. Three, two, one, breathe in. More, 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 more. Enjoy that. It is beauty. It is bliss. And it is for you. Why? Because God is for you. Man, so excited for you. So excited for this year and what God is doing. Make sure you check us out. You can go to my Patreon. You can go to seer.school to become a member and access all of the past streams that we do the past hangout sessions, they're all archived there. All of our webinars, I mean, there's so much stuff. My meditation library, that archive, all of it's there, www.seer.school. Check it out. For those of you who are interested as well, we have a retreat and conference coming up in Anderson, South Carolina. This is February the 15th through the 18th. It's going to be amazing. Myself, Martin Smith, Gil Hodges from Kingdom Talks, my friend Lahaba is going to be there doing music. It's going to be amazing. Four days. Come on. For those of you who are interested and want to hang out and want to tap into the things of the spirit, when we all get together, man, listen, amazing things happen. 
I've been doing retreats and, and leading them by myself and they've been amazing, but I'm teamed up with these guys. And when we come together, listen, it's, it's going to be amazing when you bring forth expectation and we are all in that childlike faith and we're all in awe and wonder and God is always moving in our midst. So I look forward anytime I connect with those guys. If you're interested in that, go to any of those websites that are in the description, truthseeker.com, seer.school, get your tickets today. Check it out, www.seer.school. Love you guys. I'll see you again.